Okay, Debbie. Okay, I'm good. All right, first of all, welcome everybody. Uh, welcome, uh, we have a couple of guests tonight, several guests. We've got, um, where did you go, Elena and her friend Harriet um, from, let me find the name of your camera club again. She put it in the chat from the Park West Camera Club. So you're an IMAC member. They wanted to see our uh, competition tonight. So welcome. You're very welcome. We certainly would love to have you join us too. You're welcome to do that. Um, I think that's it on guests. Am I missing anybody, Matt? I don't think so. I think everybody else is uh, you know who they are. Okay, yeah. So welcome to you guys. And of course, welcome to everybody else. Uh, I'm looking at my agenda here. I wanted to remind you that we have a field trip for those of you who are interested on Saturday, March 5th to the Abbott Marshlands. Uh, that's at 2.30 on a Saturday afternoon, right before um, the meeting, I sent out an email and I ask you all to take a look at it, even if you're not coming, because I put in the list of who I think is coming. And if I'm wrong and I either forgot you or I put you on and I shouldn't have, um, you know, please take a look at it so I can uh, get it right. And you still have time to RSVP, of course, if, if you'd like to go. Um, I just want to know if you're going, but you know, you, you can wait a little while if you're not sure. And it will be, I won't say it'll be rain or shine because it won't, if it's raining or snowing, we won't go, but uh, it, any other reason, any other weather, we will go. So if it's cold, you know, we'll just ask everybody to, to bundle up. Uh, so take a look for that email and I'll probably be sending out one or two more and I have to, uh, Linda, I couldn't find the uh, permission form. So I'm gonna have to send that back out, but I'm gonna have to ask you to send it to me again because I, I just can't find it in my, my online folders. All right, um, that is really all I have. I'm gonna call on, can you unmute Linda so she can talk about um, the uh, treasurer's report, Matt? Yep. Linda, if you don't have it in front of you, I, I have it. Do you have it, Linda? Do you have it handy? Uh, Unmute sure. yourself. Unmute. Uh, yes, I do have it in front of me. We gotcha. Okay. Okay. Um, we have had um, forty-three members uh, read rejoined since um, for 2022. Um, we've had 31 cents of cash back from PayPal because every time we um, use the Zoom, we get uh, money back. Um, so as of right now, we have $5,067.78 um, in the coffers. So okay. we're, we're, we're doing well. So if we go back to meeting in person, we do have funds to pay the, the fee. Okay. And the fundraiser, um, can you mention that please? Sure can. Um, in December, we had, um, we had three orders and we made $7.83 on those orders. All told, since we started this in July, we've made $67.58. And we are and, still... And most of the orders have come from board members. Yeah, so we could use some, some more folks to come on on. Um, actually, I'm gonna ask uh, Vicki and Terry to speak next. If you can un unmute maybe both of them. Um, Matt and um, they're going to talk about the the fundraiser and what, what's been going on. All right, they're both unmuted. Okay, um, Terry. Uh, okay, yeah. if, I, if I start. Yeah, you can go ahead and start. Well, I can just give my latest update. 
Uh, okay, Kim what has you had like? some problems, both staffing and personal. Uh, she says she's over them now and she can accept new orders and they're working on about a two week turnaround. The only problem you may run into is if you pick some of the, I don't know what to say, what kind of colors, certain colors, um, it's getting hard to get them, you know, with all of that. So that might be the only delay. Otherwise, you can kick it back off. And Vicki, you can take off. Yeah, basically, I just wanted to say that we did have difficulty for about two months. We had absolutely no communication. Um, which is highly unusual for her. Right, I know that. And she never replied to emails. She, I think under the circumstances, she was embarrassed that she couldn't do anything. She lost the person working with her, or at least he wasn't showing up very often. Her mother had to be home taking care of her father. So her mother couldn't be there or something like that. But she couldn't do it all herself. And she just, I think she just didn't know what to do. So, um, but like Terry said, things have been worked out. She, she also suggested that we go to another place. And I was like, no, we have a deal worked out with her. Why would we start all, over again at another place that's not even local? So, um, Basically, that's it. It's, I have to tell you, per, on a personal level, I'm a little disappointed in the results of this fundraiser. A lot of work went into this, a lot of work. And especially with, from Terry and me. And the return for all that work was very disappointing. It's yeah, I'll not, reiterate that. I mean, yeah. to make only $68 in all those months, my feeling right now is if I had oh, known I'm going to make $68 back last October, I've written a check to the club for $68 and had all my time back. So I all I can say it. is get up off your butts and start buying some stuff. Uh, please, um, please consider getting something. There's a link on our website. Um, I can tell you the the quality is excellent of the. It uh, is the item. Looks like John got yeah. something. He's wearing it. He probably got that for Christmas. No, he didn't. <laughs> he got one for Debbie for Christmas. Only it was her birthday. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yes, uh, thank you, both of you. And, uh, yeah, please, uh, the, the uh, ordering is still open. Um, the mugs are really nice. If you don't want a T-shirt, some people don't wear T-shirts. Um, you know, order a mug, order a mask. If you order a mask, that one you get from Linda. Um, but, you know, please, please support the club and show your, your spirit. I'd like to suggest that we cut, have a cutoff date for when this is going to end. Because okay. getting one order in the next four months is not going to be worth any effort on our part. Okay, why don't you and um, Terry put your heads together and, and get a, uh, a date and decide. Okay, Terry, that. we'll talk about it. Okay. Okay. Um, can you please unmute Valerie? Um, and I, before Valerie speaks, or I guess, Valerie, you're unmuted anyway. Um, I, I just want to tell you, if you missed... Um, the presentation, I guess it was last Saturday or Saturday, it was last Saturday, uh, the speaker that Valerie got for us, a gentleman from the UK who was, spoke about Matt Emmett and he spoke about abandoned places in Europe. It was just absolutely amazing and you really missed something. Uh, and he said he actually has a follow-up presentation uh, and so Valerie's gonna try to get him back uh, next year. Um, we did record it, Matt, um, and uh, we can give members the link. We can't give non-members the link because he asked us not to do that. Um, but you really should listen to it. His images were absolutely amazing. Uh, he was a, a fabulous speaker and a, a fascinating subject. So especially if you like abandoned places and you weren't able to make it, um, please uh, you know, listen to it and, and look forward to having him back. So Valerie, I think you're about to top 
Matt, though, for the speaker that you have for us for March. Right. So the speaker we have for March is Sharon Farmer. Um, she is someone I saw on a Kelby One interview, and I stalked her on LinkedIn. And then when our camera was, our club was closed in, um, in the summer, I drove down because she's out of the DC area. I drove down and, and visited their club. Their club meets at the same time as our club does. So right now she's in a meeting. Um, <laughs> we played tag and we finally caught up to get her, her, um, the title of her presentation. Um, but we're going to move it up by a week because again, she meets at the same time as our club does. So we will be meeting on March the 2nd. I will follow this up with an email, um, as a quick reminder to everybody. Uh, but she's definitely a little firecracker. Um, her title is, this is living. And she does a lot of photo journalism and she does documentarian. Um, she's a documentarian and she says is his and her story. She's not a couch potato and what she likes to do is um, find ways to create uh, with her mind. And she likes to be around people who create with their mind, whether that's visual arts, music, literature, poetry, theater. Um, she loves it all. Uh, she doesn't watch a lot of TV. Uh, she is really someone I'm looking forward to. I've seen her work is really, really great. Um, she actually did work in the White House for a spell um, for a couple presidents. It was Clinton and Bush. And I'm trying to remember if she was with Bush too as um, the senior, I can't remember. But she really is something and she is the, um, the founder of her club. So she knows very well of what we, what we do and, and what they do. It's a, it's a little different um, how they run their, their clubs. They do a lot of outings and then they bring their pictures back and they talk about them. Um, not as much as a competition like we, we have, but she, she, you'll have a lot of fun with her. Sharon has great work and a lot of great energy. So I'm looking forward to it. So again, it'll be next Wednesday, March the 2nd. Terrific. Thank you. Yeah. So keep in mind next week, next week. So we're meeting again in a week. And then our field trip is that Saturday. So a lot going on for the club in the next uh, what's a little bit of time. Uh, let's see what else I have. We've got um, Terry, do you want to talk about Photorama real quick? Hold on, Terry. Terry again? You got to yeah. unmute again, Terry. You're good now, Terry. Okay. Uh, Photorama, okay. Uh, photo, am I unmuted? Yep. You're unmuted. Photorama is Saturday, April 9th. Um, it, as, far as, as far as it looks right now, you can make the choice as whether you come in person or it will be virtual as well. But uh, it's a little different this year. They're having a person named Judy Host who's a uh, educator, portrait photographer, and uh, she's going to spend the morning and part of the afternoon with the normal lectures that you see at Photorama. And then she's going to um, actually conduct a model shoot, a live model shoot, where you try and put into practice some of the things you learn and, and, and that. And that'll start, at, I guess, about two o'clock. Um, look through the brochure because the program is like the normal program where you can buy a lunch and spend $30, which I think is $10 cheaper than normal, and hear all the program. If you want to take part in the model shoot, it's, I believe, another $20 or $30. So you can decide if you want to do that. Um, so that's Saturday, April 9th. Um, the uh, registration is now open, so you can go in. I sent an email out and you could just click on something in that email and go right to it. And you're gonna, you're gonna sign up via Eventbrite. And uh, so that's about it. It's, it's Photorama. Um, <clears throat> I did wanna just mention that I sent out the results of the winter NJFCC competition and we did rather well. Uh, Tam Stewart actually got a medal 
So he scored a 26, which is unbelievable score. And uh, he got a medal. And we had three or four people who got merit awards. And we had uh, some HMs. They're all listed in the email, but we did uh, very well. We'll be coming up with another competition for NJFCC toward the end of March. I'll let you know as soon as Will or Joan lets me know when it's up on the website. I'll let you know when you can start to put in um, images. And that's about it. Um, oh, yeah, one other thing. I guess Matt's going to talk to you about a show coming up real soon, Gorgon, right in town. I just want to mention to you that we got a one-year delay on our Mon Monroe show, and that's a beautiful big gallery, takes 80 to 100 pictures. So if, if you, you know, got some stuff, you've won some awards, start to be thinking now about framing your photos so we can put together a real nice show because before long, it'll be summertime. And then before you know it, it's going to, it's going to be getting close to September, October, November. And uh, we need a lot of photos. And if you get okay, them. Okay, that's about it, Debbie. Thank you. And uh, just keep in mind, if you get them framed for this show, you can put them in the Monroe show too, if you like. Oh yeah, they're two different shows. So, you know, if you, if you put them into Gauguin, um, just use them again, you know, if they're that good. You know, we've had a lot of people win awards, new people win awards, you know, first place, second place, third place. Get those pictures framed. Take the time now to look about getting them framed so you're ready when we need them. And, and Matt and um, you know, both galleries have, they have a little bit of different um, rules, I believe, as to what has to be on the back in terms of fasteners. So Matt will talk about that now for Gorgon because that's coming sooner and we'll get you the information for Monroe when, that's, um, when that gets closer. So um, go ahead, um, Matt, you talk about the other one. Actually, uh, both galleries are hanging the same way, I think. Oh, that would, that's, that'd be great. So it's basically the wire on the back. Uh, we do have a chart somewhere on how to wire your stuff if you don't remember. Uh, the gallery that in Cranberry that we have, the Gurgan, we have the month of April. Um, hopefully we're hanging April 1st. That's up to Joe. I will unmute Joe. If he's available for April 1st, I don't know. So that's coming fast, everybody. We're, you know, we're yeah, I only... have to. I let me, let me see what I can do. I might. I I have to take a day off sometime between now and the end of April because before I go on vacation, before I go diving, I need to take one day off. So I that might be. Like, I might be able like to take a first half. Good day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, might be a good day. So that's just it. Um, yeah, so and I have. I have. That, I, have that's a, the I have a show. We can I, hang. Okay. And then unfortunately, we can only hang Monday well, through Friday. The problem we need, well, see, Friday wouldn't be a problem for me. I'm off every Friday, so that would uh, well, be that's April perfectly 1st. That's, fine. That's a Friday, so. Is it? Yeah. If it's a Friday, then there's no problem with that. How's that? Okay. There you go. Sounds yeah, good. That's it. Anything else we that's, need that's to know, Matt? Thing. Matt, so how many uh, we're, photos? We're going to hang April 1st. Um, I believe we can hang like 40 or 50 in there. I have to check my records about um, November depends on the size there, there, yeah we need some different sizes at that point though yeah okay. two per member um big and small is great uh there's no topic no nothing you know there's no specifics on what you can hang it's whatever you'd like uh, and you can and you can set a price for it too you if can you'd set like a price for it. it yes uh we are not allowed to have an opening rece uh, reception as of now I don't think those rules will change, but as of now, there's no receptions allowed because of the COVID rules. Um, and then the gallery is open Monday through Friday. So hopefully uh, people will go in there and check it out during the week. But, and we have the entire month of April. So we'll take back down probably the last uh, couple of days in April. Yeah, let's, let's, yeah, the first should be fine then. That's that. I, I, I thought of, I, I must have got my calendar mixed up. So that's all. I thought it was the middle of the week. So yeah, no problem. I'm, I'm going to be off anyway. Okay, good. 
Terrific. Great. I will let her know that that's the day we're going to hang then. And I saw a number of items in the chat about um, folks asking questions about Photorama and Vicki said it's April 9th and John put a link in um, to the Photorama information if uh, you don't have that and, uh, and you need to. So I think we're ready then, um, Matt, if you can- One, mute one quick question. Yes. Can I ask one? Just to, to sure. Terry. Um, we need to, we have to have the six, the categories for the nature one, right? For that one? You have to unmute Terry uh, again, spring. Matt. Yeah. It's okay. the four nature I, and uh, pictorial uh, and uh, open and creative yeah, okay. under pictorial. Yeah, I just, I just, yeah, I, I forgot about that. I just was looking going, oh, I was going to just put the, make it, make the, you know, the nature one and that's it. So it's like, okay, fine. So yeah. Yeah, whatever. Okay. So NJFCC, the next competition is four nature categories. Yeah. Terry and oh, the, you yeah, got four the, nature and two pictorial. It's pictorial. no different but than you any only other put two time. pictures. You got okay. open and creative under pictorial. There'll be a week before, and then a week later will be nature. The four categories: birds, flowers, zoology, and uh, general. And no, no hand of man, correct? No hand of man in nature, and there must be hand of man in pictorial. Right. Okay. Terrific. Yeah, I just was looking at that, just trying to get those created, uh, Terry. That's that's what I'm looking at now. So just to let you know. Okay. Okay. Terrific. All right. Well, if we have nothing else, if you can unmute Lynn, Matt, and mute everybody else, so Lynn can introduce um, Henry. And uh, we'll get started on our uh, arches competition. Okay, hi everybody. Um, Henry Rowan is a national award winning photographer and the executive director of the Pennsylvania Center for Photography, PCP in Doylestown. In addition to being a working professional photographer, Henry is a frequent lecturer and judge throughout the region and teaches a variety of workshops at the PCP. Henry's work is frequently on display at galleries and shows, and he has gained a following for his distinctive style of portraiture, as well as his unique portrayal of landscapes, nature, and sports. Photographically, Henry's style is well-defined, but somewhat difficult to describe. He plays with movement, light, and color in unison to create images that are easy to identify as his. The driving theme of his work is his con concept of non-existent imagery. The images I create never existed and never will exist. They are combinations of angles, colors, light, time, lenses, sensors, and more which produce images that the human eye can't see and the human mind can process in real life. Unlike the photojournalist, I am not trying to capture a moment in time, but rather I'm hoping to create a feeling in space that conveys the essence of the subject. Working within this framework provides a great deal of artistic freedom and fosters a worldview that is both individualistic and offers unlimited creative opportunities. Many of his images are the results of hours of work and are part of his camera graph series in which post-processing plays a major role to visually construct his reality. Regardless of the scene, Henry strives to reveal the essence of his subjects in a manner that is as unique as the subjects themselves. And Valerie is going to put up his website so that you can see his work in the chat. So welcome, Henry. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Pleasure to be here. And uh, I'd like to start by saying, Harvey, you have the best background I've ever seen on a Zoom presentation. So congratulations on your selection there. We knew you'd like that, Henry. <laughs> That's... Uh, Pretty special, nicely done, nicely chosen or done or however it happened. But 
So I'm basically ready to go. I've judged uh, before. And the one thing uh, that I, I start off telling everybody is that uh, having been married for so long, I recognize that I'm always wrong. Um, and what you need to do is you need to take into account that people that are judging your work are judging it from their perspective, not yours. So um, when you're creating images, you always have to be cognizant of the audience and who you're showing, who you're creating your images for. Um, so, uh, you know, take what I have to say, hopefully it will be, be meaningful to you, but, um, you know, don't get upset or, or frustrated uh, if I make a comment that you don't agree with. Um, I don't agree with a lot of the stuff that people say about my work. And, you know, at some point you get over it and you don't worry about it anymore. So, uh, you know, sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. Terrific, thank you. So Henry, I'll announce the uh, images. Um, Matt can tell you about our categories and, uh, and we'll go from there. Okay, sounds good. All right, we're gonna start with group one. Uh, we have two images, we'll do a quick, uh, flip through and then you can start judging. Sounds great. And of course, everyone knows Henry, of course, as well, that our, our subject tonight is arches. Yep. Oh, have we started? You've started, yep. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought we were doing a quick run through. Are there only two here? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, an interesting image. Well, uh, I'm going to do a seven on this. Um, I, I like the shape. I think that there's a little bit more tonality that could be brought out, a little bit more contrast. Uh, the sharpness is somewhat of an issue, and that's always difficult to tell what the, the true situation is. That's one of the problems with Zoom and doing um, low resolution judging. Um, but it's, it's a nice image, it's attractive. It's, um, it's, it's well done. Um, a seven is a good score for it. Creative spaces. Uh, I like the front part of it. Uh, very much. The background is a little bit iffy in my mind. Um, we'll do a seven on this one. Technically, it, it's, it's managed very well. Uh, the composition is pretty good. Uh, the cars in the background, the question I'd ask here is what's your story? You know, why did you take it? If you took it just because there's arches, um, you know, that's fine. If you try, what's the essence of this image? And that's a little bit hard to see in this, but I'll give this one a seven. All right, we got uh, two sevens, so we need one HM. You have uh, this image. So we're this. doing an HM on these two? Yeah, you need one, one HM, yep. Okay. Uh, I'll go with the shell. And the reason for that is technically they're both about the same. Um, but th this one seems to have more of a story. It's, it's a little bit, uh, I like it. So we'll just leave it at that. All right. We'll review this contest and we'll continue on. Okay. So our honorable mention is Susan Freeman for Art, Arch of Lightning. Congratulations, Susan. I know she's on the phone. I saw her tonight. All right, we're gonna move on to group two. There's uh, 12 images in this group. So there's a first, second, and third, and two HMs. And we'll do a quick flip through. Okay. All 
All right, and here we go. Okay, gondola arches. Uh, I'm going to uh, give this one an eight. I love the the scene in general. Um, the one thing that I have a question about is the sky underneath uh, the front gray arch uh, looks very noisy. I'm not sure I understand why that is. The top part of the sky looks clean. Um, the bottom does not. <clears throat> underneath, uh, it's basically the area I'm talking about is over the bridge. Um, but I, I like the shot. It's uh, interesting and it's, it's nicely done. I'm sorry, what was your score? An eight. Okay, thank you. Church arches contrast. Oh boy, that's moving over the image for me. I couldn't read the whole um, title, unfortunately. Okay, um, so I'm gonna give this one a seven. The, the problem with this image, and you have to be really careful, when you go to HDR, uh, it, it can work for you but it can also um, bite you. And in this case, as soon as you see halos around edges, for example, on the roof, you know you have gone too far. That's from a judging point of view, as soon as you see the halos, um, it's, it's a, a problem image. And it simply means that you've taken it too far. The other part where I think you have a bit of a problem with this is the detail on the sky. Um, you never want to blow your highlights. Yeah, it's my number one rule for exposure is never blow your highlights. And in this case, the clouds are blown. Uh, so the image itself is quite nice. The processing, uh, I, I'd go back and see what you can do to tone down the processing a little bit. I don't think you're, you're losing more than you're gaining. Um, so we'll do a seven on this one. Weathered worship space. Uh, a pretty image. Um, I'm going to do a seven on this one as well. The photography is all about light. And there's not a great, uh, this looks like an overcast day. The scene is interesting. It was photographed well. You didn't have the light uh, to, to punch it up. Now, in some cases, you can go through and you can add light and add uh, a little bit more contrast in, um, in post, but you need, to, you need this one to pop a little bit more. Nicely shot, though. What was your score? I'm sorry. A seven. Thank you. Arch at, I think that's supposed to say Duke Gardens. Uh, we'll do a seven on this one also. Um, it's, it's a picture of the arch. When, when you're shooting, what is the essence of what you're, of what you're photographing? Why are you taking the picture? Um, and really focus on this. I think the scene has a lot of potential and even simple scenes like this, you can spend a lot of time looking for the correct angle. And I'm not saying this isn't, this may be the, the best angle on it, but what's the essence uh, of this? Is it the arch? Is it the lion? What, what is the story behind it? Uh, so I'm gonna give this one a seven. Motor exhibit hall. Okay, we're gonna do a seven on this one as well. Um, here, here's a situation where you have a lot more room um, to make this a better image. It's, it's underexposed. Uh, you really should be looking to, on this particular one, you can make this into a much better image uh, by popping up the whites, bringing up the shadow areas a little bit. The underexposure is hurting this a, a fair amount. Um, so, you know, it's, it's in focus uh, and it's, it's an arch, but bring out those whites where it says motor exhibit building. That should be white, even if it wasn't white uh, when you looked at it. it. It's just a little bit on the dark side. Hallway. 
again, this is a, a nicely constructed shot. Um, uh, we'll do an aid on this. It's, it's well constructed. The lines are straight on it. Um, the building is interesting. Obviously, it has arches. The, the hot spot of the light can't be helped, and uh, the rest of it is very well exposed. Um, again, though, you know, as you're going through these, what makes, what are you photographing? Why are you taking the picture is the question you always have to ask yourself. What is the essence of this building? And as you start to explore things more, you will, your, your photographs are going to get enormously better. Studio 7. Um, very interesting shot. It's there. This is, again, I, I can't really tell. I'm not going to judge this on its quality. Um, it, it's, it's hard to tell because it looks almost like a cell phone picture. And cell phones can take great pictures, but don't rely on them. Uh, there's a reason for good cameras. Um, and this is, this is um, it, it's a little bit on the dark side. Tough situation to handle. Uh, the lines are very interesting. Uh, we'll, we'll do a seven. Tracks of doom. Okay. Um, we're going to do a seven on this one as well. There's, uh, I, I like the shot a lot. There, from a post-processing point of view, there's a ton more that I think that you can do with it. I like that you haven't blown the sky out. Um, even at the top, but this is one where if you pull up the shadow detail a little bit, you're going to be in great shape. Um, but right now it's a little on the dark side. So look, play with the shadow detail, um, and you'll be good. Abandoned fort. The, what I'm getting here is uh, an image like this holds its own in black and white and starts to fall apart a little bit in color. And um, the black and white adds an abstractness to it that sometimes will work. Uh, but again, what is the essence of this? Why, uh, it, it's a series of arches going down. So what's its story? You know, you have to get into it, right? You, you, wanna, you wanna create photographs. You don't wanna click the shutter. So on something like this, put a person into the frame or, or have somebody, you know, moving through or, or think through what, what could this be? Because it's a great location. You know, right now it's a picture of arches. What could it be? And that's how you have to sort of think when you're taking that. But I'll do a seven on this one. It's nicely composed. Lines are straight. Exposure is good. Section of Paul and Skill Viaduct. Um, on a shot like this, image sharpness is just absolutely critical. Um, and again, I don't know whether it's because of the size of the file. It, it's not a crisp image. Um, you know, and something like this, there's, there's stuff here that looks really cool, that has a lot of potential. Uh, what you don't want to do is you don't want to add things in that, that don't add anything to the, the image. Um, the cat over on the left would be a, a great potential image. The uh, graffiti on the right side is a great potential image. Uh, everything in the middle is, is a bridge. So what, what's that bridge saying to you? So I'm going to give this a seven. Stone arch. Very tough exposure, nicely done. Um, I'd like to see a little bit more at the bottom. Um, one of the things that people don't do a lot these days is actually use their feet. Um, and people are relying too much on zoom lenses and sort of standing in one, one position. Uh, you need a little bit more perspective on this for it really to work. The exposure is really quite good. I'm su surprised, nice job with that. But, what is the story of the bridge? Is it just that it's a stone arch? Um, you know, it, it's, it's kind of a tough call. Why, you know, 
don't be afraid to step back. Your feet are your best zoom lens that you have. Uh, so step back. And if not, change lenses and go a little bit wider. So seven on this. Historical arch. Uh, this is this is nicely done. A very tough composition because um, you're shooting at an angle. I like that you've got in the middle part of the uh, the shelf relatively level. Not easy to do. It's in focus uh, and exposed well. Uh, I think there's other shots here. You know, one of the things that a lot of people tend to do is they tend to see the overall scene, but look at how many different shots are in this, the clock, the books, everything about this says that there's a ton of stuff here um, that will create a, a really interesting image that says something. Um, so I'm gonna do a seven on this one too. All righty, we have two eights, so we need a first and a second. So we have this image or this image. We're going to take this image as first. Okay. Which means that one's second. And now we need a third place. And then two HMs. So we have 10 images here. This is okay. one, two. Third place on this one. This is third? That's third. OK. Three, four, five, six. Honorable mention on that one. This one? Yep. Seven eight, nine, and the 10th image. Uh, we'll do an honorable mention on that one. All right. We'll review this contest. Okay, level two. Honorable mention. First one is Tracks of Doom by Walter Blitz. Congratulations, Walter. Historical Arch, Lou Pico. Congratulations to Lou. Third place. Weathered Worship Space, Susan Ladon. Congratulations, Susan. Second place. Gondola Arches, Terry Donofrio. Congratulations, Terry. All righty. Now we have our third group. There's 22 images. We need a first, second, third, four HMs. And we'll do a quick run through. All right. And here we go. Okay, Grand Central Station. Um I'm going to do a, a seven on on this one. Um it's it's a good shot. Everything seems to be lined up straight. And um, you know, the, the trick with doing things like this is is 
finding that unique angle and finding something a little bit different within the building. Um, when you're shooting something as iconic as Grand Central Station, um, you know, you have to you have to be looking for what's different and, and seeing it a little bit differently. Uh, so I'll do a seven on this one. Strolling through the arches. Uh, I'm going to do a nine on this one because this one has an essence to it. And, you know, hopefully, you know, as we go through these, you'll understand what I mean. There, there's a feeling, a mood that you get when you look at this image. It actually says something. Uh, now, what that is is going to vary from person to person, uh, but this is a nicely crafted image. Uh, we'll do a nine on this one. Early morn at Ponce Benezet. Yeah. Early mornings are tough shoots. Um, you know, this is this is one where you know my my strongest recommendation when you're shooting early in the morning is bracket. Don't you know? Don't be afraid of killing a couple million pixels. Um, just bracket away. This the sky is well exposed. Uh, the bridge is a little bit in shadow. Can probably be pulled up in post uh, and make it a little bit stronger image. Um, the the one thing be very very careful with when you spot the skies, because this one looks like it has a couple spots in it, though I'm not sure. Uh, when you go into a, a full-blown competition, if you have spots, uh, dust spots on your sensor and they're showing up in the sky, the judges will just crucify you. Uh, so be really careful of that. Um, we'll do a seven on this one. Our Lady of Carmen Cathedral. Uh, it's a pretty church. Um, it technically it's it's well done. Um, you know, I would check the uh, the pillars that are closest to us for straightness. They're not quite straight when you're doing architectural work. You want your lines, the, the most dominant lines. In this case, it's going to be either the stained glass windows that are closest to the edges or the pillars that are closest to the edges. They need to be absolutely straight or they need to be way off. They have to be intentionally off um, because it, it throws you visually. Um, it's, it's fine. It's, it's a nice picture of the church. Uh, I'll give it a seven. <coughs> a rainbow of arches. We'll do an eight on this one. Um, this is a little bit over the top, but it works. Um, it's a, a little bit high key. You know, I think where this might work a little bit better is a uh, try for a little bit more contrast, a little less high key. If you were to darken down the blues in the, the arch, I think this thing would fly off the screen. Um, we'll do an eight on this one. Looking through the arch. Well-conceived image. I think you need a little bit more space, a um, little bit more, more top and bottom room, uh, so you don't feel quite so compressed. Uh, but exposure-wise, it, it's pretty good for the snow. Snow's tough to work with. Um, I'll give an eight to this one. Walk with me. The, uh, I'm going to score this one a seven. The, it, sort of the extreme, when you, when you go into a panorama, especially what amounts to a vertical panorama, you've really got to have a reason for doing it. Um, and just being big, just being tall, isn't always enough of a reason for it. it, it what's, what's on the sides that you're cutting out? Um, and the question you have to ask yourself is, what is my picture saying? What is my, I'm going to say it again, what's the essence of this picture? Um, and that's true of any picture. And until you really start to think in those terms, you're clicking the shutter. And this is a nice click. Um, but 
why am I looking at it? Why are you taking the picture? Why? And I'm not, I'm not focusing just on this picture, but on any of the images that you're shooting, why are you doing it? And ask yourself that uh, before you shoot or while you shoot and take lots of different pictures, different angles. There's good stuff on this that you could, could shoot. I'm gonna do a seven on this. Arches at Boyd Park. Um, We'll do a, a seven on this one uh, as well. Uh, it doesn't have the crispness that, that I'd really like to see. And I think what there's, even though there's a wide dynamic range in here, this is one of those pictures that if you start playing with your shadows and your whites uh, in post-processing that you can pop a little bit more. So I would, I'll, I'll do a seven on this one and say, play with it and post a little bit better not better, but more. And I think you'll come up with a, a better image. Under the arch. Okay, we'll do a nine on this one. Um, the, uh, the child is interesting and adds a, a huge element uh, to this image. If you, in your mind, take out the, the, the kid, you have a totally different photograph. Because right now, this is a picture of, of a child. And you're showing the child in scale. Um, if you take them out, you have a picture of an arch. Um, so, and, and when I'm saying that, and this applies to the buildings as well, when, you, when you're taking, if we just had the arch here, everybody that walks through this, this, whatever it is, is seeing that arch. What's unique about it? And in this case, what we have that's unique is we have the child and the relationship of the child with the arch. Uh, so we'll do a nine on this one. Gateway to the West. We'll do a nine on this one too. This is a nice shot of, of the arch. Um, I like that the cars are in the front. They provide a sense of scale. The building in the center, the Capitol uh, building in the center uh, or whatever that is, is is well done, well positioned. Uh, the sky is not blown. It's really nicely done. Uh, certainly a nine on this one. Valley Forge. Um, I'm going to do an eight on this one. Could use a little bit more room off to the sides, I think. And on a shot like this, don't be afraid to go in and clone out the. Uh, things that don't be long. For example, in this one, the lights might be long, the uh, ground lights might be long there, but they don't really belong in the photograph. So clone them out, um, unless you're in a competition that says you can't clone anything out. <clears throat> but, and make sure your lines are straight. Step back further, give yourself room to crop and to straighten your lines in post. Um, I've said this in every workshop I ever taught, Cropping is not a mortal sin in any of the world's major religions. And it's true. Give yourself some room to work. You don't have to fill up the frame in the camera. You have plenty of megapixels to take you over the top. So um, uh, we'll do an aid on this. Street light. Okay, this is a nicely conceived shot. Well done. Somebody looked and saw something different and special and you shot it well. Uh, we'll do a nine on this one. My only thought would be <clears throat> that again, give you, if this is full frame, you wanna give yourself a little bit more because in post it's very easy to straighten up the vertical pole, the vertical light pole, and it's not currently, but it should be straight. Um, Architectural photographers, you know, there's nothing that will drive an architectural photographer crazier than um, lines that aren't straight. So you have plenty of room. It's easy to do in Lightroom, Photoshop, or any of the programs. Give yourself enough room to do it. So we'll do a nine on this one. Coliseum Nightlights. We're going to do a seven on this one. Great idea. Um, Tough shooting, and I it's hard to travel with a tripod. 
Uh, but you know, one of the things about travel photography that you have to do is you have to get really inventive on ways to steady your camera at night. Um, and you don't quite have enough um, uh, shadow detail to really pull this through. So when you're shooting something like this, find something that you can rest your camera on um, or against and brack it away. Don't try to figure out what the perfect exposure is. You're there to have a good time. Uh, and that includes taking good photographs, but don't be afraid of bracketing. You know, it doesn't matter how many pictures you take. Memory is cheap these days. Just, just go for it and bracket. Pontegard Aqueduct. A different angle. Um, I like it. I like the way it flows across the frame. Um, it, it's so much more interesting than shooting it straight on. Uh, nicely done. We'll do an eight on this one. Good exposure, uh, sharp, nicely done. Matt, you just did 88. There you go. Basilica in Jardine. It's a, uh, a pretty church. I'm going to do a, a seven on this one. When you're shooting up, it's really hard to keep your vertical line straight. I know I've said that three or four times already, but you have to be thinking of those things when you're shooting. So on something like this, especially since the building is so unique, don't try to take a straight shot of it. You know, take a, you want to take memory shots. You want to remember your trip. Uh, but if you're into a situation like this, take a couple of straight shots and then go crazy. You know, look at all the possibilities here. Um, and you could spend a day in this church photographing it. And you could spend two minutes if you're just taking straight shots. But there's a lot of potential here. Uh, it's well exposed uh, and it's a pretty church. Uh, we'll do a seven on this one. Arches to heaven. I, I'm having a, um, I, I think it's a softness issue. It, it's I, I like the concept. I like the composition of it. Um, it just seems very soft when I'm looking at it on the screen. Um, again, it might be a problem with, uh, you know, low resolution uh, zoom things. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do an eight on this one because um, I really like the composition uh, and it's it's well done. But I have, I have some concerns. Uh, make sure when you're doing something like this that your images are sharp. Okay, this one, um, a different angle and also well com composed, uh, sharp. Uh, I'd like that it leads you right back out the way it came. That's not typically what you see, but it works in this case. Uh, we'll do an eight on this. Princeton Arches. I'm going to do a seven on this one. Um, it's it's well exposed. It's it's a little bit different. You looking up is always a good idea. Also, when you're walking anywhere, remember to look behind you because uh, any race car driver will tell you that if you travel a track in one direction and then turn around and drive it in the other, it's a totally different track. And that's true of walking with a camera as well. Um, it's it's a well well done shot. Um, we'll do a seven on it. Decaying bridge over highway. Uh, it looks like so many bridges in this country. <laughs> um, there, we'll do a seven on this one. 
there, there's a tonality in the sky that uh, is, is a little bit odd. Um, the cloud, the shadows of the cloud have a, uh, a cyan cast to them that you almost never see. The blue has kind of a magenta cast. Be very careful of your skies. Um, other clubs will tell you that I hate yellow skies uh, and I generally do, but I don't, you, you've got to get the blues right and you've got to get the, the shadow details right. Uh, if I saw this sky, it would scare the hell out of me. And, and you don't want to do that on a picture like this. So I'm going to do a seven. Alexander Hall interior. Uh, it, it's a nice picture of, of the hall. Um, when you're going to have things like the light and that's on, on the right hand side, don't cut off its base. Uh, it, it doesn't, you know, you, you need a little bit more room. Um, and th there's nothing wrong with stitching images together either. If you don't have, if you can't move back, and if you don't have a lens that's wide enough, turn your camera vertically, shoot a couple frames, just move across, shoot a couple frames, and uh, figure out how to put them together in the in post. Uh, you need a little bit more on this one, so I'm going to do a seven. Getting a little closer. Another good arch picture. Um, I'm going to do an eight on this one. I think what I'd like to see on this is a little bit more pop. Um, and I, I suspect that it's there and relatively easy to get. So I'd play with this in post. It's, it's a nice shot. Uh, well done. Um, well, we're going to do an eight on this. Brooklyn. Well seen. Um, this is a shot that is, is somewhat common. Um, and, and this is a little bit different. You need a little bit. It's too long and narrow for most viewers. You need a little bit more on the side. Uh, and it, it feels a little bit too compressed for me. Um, but that's just personal opinion. Um, I like it. We'll do an eight on it. All right, we need a first, second, and third out of the nines. There's four of them. So we have this image, this image, this image, and this image. Okay, uh, first place will be the first one. This one's first? Yep. Okay. Uh, the one more will be second, the arch, okay. that's second. And then I need a third. And the third will be uh, the child underneath the arch. Which makes this an HM. All right, I need three HMs out of eight. So you have this image, 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 and this one. Okay, uh, an HM on this one. Okay. An HM on the one next to it, the arch. Okay. And if we go back to the first one. The church. Yep, we'll do an HM on that. And an HM on the one next to it. Uh, actually, this is the last HM we need. Okay. All right, it's one, two, three. And there was one on the previous. Okay. All right, level three. Honorable mentions.
First one is a Rainbow of Arches by Rose Scudari. Congratulations, Rose. Streetlight, Ed Horniker. Congratulations, Ed. Getting a little closer, Stan Pepka. Congratulations, Stan. Brooklyn, Fred Apellian. Honorable mention. Congratulations, Fred. Third place, Under the Arch, Vicki DeVico. Congratulations, Vicki. Second place, Gateway to the West, Stan Pepka. Congratulations, Stan. All right, now we're going to take a, a quick five minute break. And then we have uh, the last group after this. So I'll put a little timer up. Anybody can unmute themselves if they'd like in a minute, as soon as I select that. Come on. Anybody can unmute themselves if they'd like. Debbie, you should be unmuted. I am. Henry, you should be unmuted. He's still muted. There he is. All righty. Find my window here. All right, we're on uh, group four. This is the salon group. We have 20 images, so we need the first, second, third, four HMs. We'll do a quick run through. And here we go. Okay, level four. Patriotic arches. Uh, we'll do an eight on this one. It's um, shooting nights always tough. Getting a good exposure is always tough. And uh, this is nicely done. Um, I love the tree on the right hand side. It's a well conceived image and a well executed image. I'm sorry, I missed your score. An eight. Matt's finally having his dinner. Tough. <laughs> Medieval city. I'm going to do a nine on this one. I, I like the the angle and the fact that you're you're looking and exploring the building. Um, it's it's nicely done. You know, it's uh, I don't really have anything more to say other than you know it's a well conceived image. So uh, we'll do a nine. Courtyard of arches. I'm gonna do a seven on this one. Um, very tough shot to pull off, and this is one of those cases where you're almost you know forced into bracketing. Uh, and then creating a blended image. Um, and when you're doing that, you have the, the option, obviously, of doing HDR and sometimes in camera or out of camera. Blending uh, different exposures works far, far better than HDR does on images like this. So. Golden arches. Fun building, 
Um, I, the angle throws me a little bit. Um, this is one that I think you really need to walk around the building and spend some time with. Uh, but I'm going to give this one a seven. I, I think that, you know, the building's interesting. I think there's some potential here. Um, just walk around a little bit longer and play. Murakami Arch. Interesting place, but it doesn't really convey the essence to me. Uh, this one might work better in, as a black and white. Um, and you know, there's some shadow detail directly in the center that is, is a little bit on the dark side. So you're losing it. Uh, you're losing the detail. Uh, I think you have an image that you can work with and, and get some more impact out of. Uh, so I'm going to give this one a seven. Castle Steps. Do an eight on this one. I, I like the, the treatment. Um, might tone down the highlights just a little bit, bring out, bring the blacks back down into black. Um, but it, it's a nice image. It, it's somebody thought about this and shot it well. C and O Canal Tunnel. Do an eight on this. Um, this image works because of the person in it. Um, I usually don't have people in my images. So you think, oh, yeah, he's judging images that have people in them. That's really not how I shoot uh, and how I normally like to do it. But this is an image that needs that person. And we've seen a lot of arches. And sometimes you just need a little bit more to give you a perspective. Um, and this is a nice image. So well done. Basilica. Great looking building. Um, again, you know, I, I love shooting in cathedrals. Uh, it, it's great fun. I always take one shot straight on and then I'm looking up. Um, so <clears throat> a lot of cool stuff in them. I'm going to do a seven because I think there's a lot more potential in this building. Um, there's, it, it just, this is just a, a great place to shoot. Have fun with it. Don't, don't click, shoot, have fun, create. Um, nothing, nothing wrong with that. Under the arched ceiling. Okay, so um, Eastern State is one of those iconic places uh, that, you know, every year we see probably 500 to six, 700 pictures of. So it's got to be really special. And where this one works is it's off color, but it's a, an odd color. The yellow is kind of, kind of strange. Um, but that would be okay. The cropping things off, like the, um, the furniture in the front, almost always hurts you. And, and that's why I'm going to give this a seven. I know because I've shot at Eastern State a lot, it can be really tough. You just have to work with it. Um, but try not to crop off things that, that really do make the image. This is not a picture of, of the cell because we've all seen them. This is, is a, it's that, that, that whatever it is, is an important component. And, Cropping and hurts. Late Sunrise Mesa Arch. One of those hard, hard places to shoot. Um, and well done. And well done. We'll, we'll do a, uh, an aid on this. Um, this is, you know, bracket away time because only. Somebody else knows what the correct exposure is, but nicely done. 
flower power. Very interesting shot. Uh, and we'll do a nine on this one. Everything about this pops out at you and it forces you to look at it. And that's what you really want. You want to command your audience's attention. And, and this does, whether it's the colors, uh, the shapes, it doesn't really matter. This is an image you have to look at. And you know whether somebody else likes it or not, they can, at least they're looking at it. Um, and this is good. Bang, Bangkok, Chinatown. Um, nicely composed, well exposed. Um, might have a little bit more shadow detail in the trees that could come out. Uh, but it needs something else to really work. I'm going to do a seven on this. Um, sometimes you just have to have to be patient and wait for somebody to walk in or walk through the picture to skateboard, uh, to run, to do whatever. You, you just kind of, this one just kind of needs something else. Um, take your time, relax, sit there for ten minutes. Um, so. Isle of Arches. I'm going to do a seven on this one. Um, it, that, it is what it is. Uh, you know, uh, having a priest at the end or walking toward you uh, would be, be wonderful on this. Uh, because otherwise you're taking a picture of a building. Um, and, you know, that's what everybody's seeing. So really try to pull out what's important about this. And that, you know, I know I'm sounding harsh and, and I apologize, but, it, you know, I think part of the judging process here is, is to help people really push yourself in these situations. And you'll find that you have so much more fun when you're traveling through, you're going to see so much more. One of the benefits of being a photographer is you see the world differently. Um, so when you're taking pictures, try not to take the same pictures that everybody else is seeing. Um, and, you know, it's a great shot. It's a great, you know, it, it's well done. It's well executed. Um, but it doesn't have the strong essence of the building. So I'm going to do a seven on this. Wyoming Arch. I'm uh, going to do a seven on this uh, as well. Um, it, it's, it's a fun picture. Um, but, you know, what, what's the essence of it? I'm, I'm looking at a stone wall. Is it in the middle of the field? Is it in the middle of a parking lot? Uh, why, why does it exist? There's a story here. Um, you know, photography is a lot about storytelling and uh, people that are writers and know, photog know photography know that there's a lot of similarities because you have to describe the scene to somebody. So um, be cognizant of that, you know, let the, let the subject have an essence to it. Glass tunnel. Uh, very well exposed. Uh, I suspect this was not an easy shot um, to do. You know, I see people down on the the, uh, the far end. It's it's a one of those shots that again should probably be in black and white. Uh, don't be afraid of black and white because it, black and white has a totally different feel to it, uh, and oftentimes it works on shots like this. It makes it a little bit weirder. Um, so I'm going to do a seven on this. Spiral bound. Nine. Okay. What I really like about this shot is that somebody really thought about it. They, they saw it or thought about how to create it. They created a photograph. And that is so different than taking a picture. So this one gets a nine and my hat's off to the creator. 
Hotel Nacional, Nacional um, Cuba. Uh, we'll do a, uh, I'm gonna do an eight on this. Um, I, I like what makes this one a little bit different than some of the other hallways are the shadows going up on the ceiling. They give it a different feel. Uh, I don't know if the hallway was actually this yellow or whether it's a color balance issue. Um, so I, I'm not a huge fan of yellow pictures, uh, but I'm not going to let that influence. I like I like the shadows on the ceiling. The Grand Mosque. This is actually a really nice shot and gets a nine. Um, very nicely composed, thoughtfully composed, um, very well exposed in a tough situation, um, entertaining shot, pretty shot, I and mean, it's, it's great. Oculus Arches. I'm going to give this an eight and strongly suggest to the person that uh, created it to crop up from the bottom a little bit. Because now you've got an abstract that I think is going to really work. Um, it, there's a little bit more contrast that should be coming, popping out of this puppy. Uh, but it's a really nice shot. Really nice shot. The Grand Mosque of Cordoba. Um, very cartoonish, very nicely done. Um, I'm going to give this a nine, but suggest to the creator that you try straightening the lines, especially on the edges, because that's going to give you a very different feel. Uh, to it um, that I think is going to work. It, you know, if you have enough room not to lose too much, because again, the whole thing was cropping. But this is a fun image. This is another one of those images that you just have to look at. So nicely done. All righty, we got five nines. I need a first, second, third. I can't see. Um, oh, here they come. All right, so here's your images. This is one, two, three. That's number one. Four. That's and, number two. <laughs> number one on that one. Number two on that one. Okay. Sorry. Number, number two. two on this one. Okay. Yep. And then that's number the three. last one. This is number three. Okay. That's number three. So then we have one HM, two HM, I need two more HMs out of the six eights. <laughs> So we have one image, two, three, four, five, and the sixth. I need two of them. Okay, that one's going to be an HM. The Oculus. And the first image uh, of the lights will be the other one. Yep. All right, we'll review this contest and then you have one more task and that's the best to show. Okay. Okay, HMs for level four. Patriotic Arches, Sue Fielder, honorable mention. Congratulations, Sue. Medieval City, Harvey Birnbaum. Congratulations, Harvey. Flower Power, also Sue Fielder. Congratulations, Sue. Oculus Arches, Joe Gilcrest. Congratulations, Joe. 
third place. The Great Mosque of Cordoba, Linda Heath. Congratulations, Linda. Second place, the Grand Mosque, Francisco Gomez. Congratulations, Francisco. All right, I'll put together the best of show and then we will do that. All right, let's see here. Here is the best of show. You have three images to pick from. We need one. Okay. So you have this image, this image, or this image. Can you go back to the first two, please? Mm -hmm. This is the first one. Okay. This is the second one. I think we're going to go with that one for uh, best in show. This one here? Okay. Yep. Excellent. All righty. And we'll review this contest. View contest. All right, here we go. Okay, this was level three, first place, strolling through the arches, Marianne Martin. Congratulations, Marianne. You got to get a first on that, um, I think, Matt. Uh, it shows not because it's the different kind. Not in the best of show. Sorry, you're right. Yeah. Okay. But find Marianne here. She can talk about it. There you go. Marianne, you're unmuted. We can't hear you. Marianne, are you there? All right, she can't talk right now. What's the matter, John? She can't speak. All right, here's the next one. Okay, this is level two, first place, Lou DeVico, hallway. Congratulations, Lou. On mute, Lou. Okay, yep. Yeah. Can Where is that? Okay. Yep. This was taken at St. John's Church on, uh, I think it's 111th Street and 10th Avenue. And the church is absolutely magnificent. And I figured you were going to see so many pictures of the long picture of the altars 
that I said, you know what, let me just stay away from that and realize that I had walked down this hallway going out to the rectory in the back. And I thought this was pretty good. I was trying to get that light to come down a bit so it wouldn't be so uh, bright. And I got it down and I said, I didn't want to push any more. Uh, you know, cropped it, did some working on it. Henry, I straightened out those columns as best I could. <laughs> <laughs> because when you do take those pictures in the church, everything is kind of like oh, all absolutely. over the place on the angle. So uh, I did spend a lot of time working on that. And uh, it's not easy. No, and I was trying to get the tonality right on this. And I think I could have gotten a little bit better, but I kind of liked it. And uh, it literally is a, a black and white filter that I brought down to about 20%. Mm -hmm. And the colors just came out. And I said, you know what? Stop playing, leave it alone, enter it. And it, it seemed to work OK. It did. It worked yeah, nicely. So, thank you. Uh, Matt, you can try uh, Linda again. Uh, excuse me, um, Marianne again. She, I, you need to unmute her. Uh, so she was unmuted. Her. Okay, we'll try again. Still not work. Why is it still? Is there more than one Marianne on the call? She has to accept the unmute. Yep. You have to accept the unmute. She's unmuted. There you go. You can talk, Marianne. Nope, doesn't work. Moving along. And this is our best in show, level one, fourth place, spiral bound, John Aniano. Well deserved. Yeah, nice shot, John. Definitely my favorite. Yeah. Well deserved. Unmute you, John. Okay. So what oh. funky lens did you use for this, John? <laughs> well, first, let me just say, Marianne said, thank you. Thank the judge. Thank you, Henry. That tell him uh, that she worked on her black and white for well over an hour and she appreciated your comments. So unfortunately she can't seem to speak through the system. I don't know why, but uh, this one, uh, literally I took Saturday night as the sun was going down in my shop. Uh, I write in notebooks as for my business. I keep track of what I'm doing. And my notebook was sitting there and the sun was coming through the window. And it was just like, oh, look, little tiny arches. So I had my camera there and I got in real close and I took a picture and got rid of all the extraneous stuff in the back, made it all black and just I thought, hey, little arches. So I just have to be at the right place at the right time, so. Which lens, John? Uh, nine millimeter. Wide angle. Was this up in that uh, in your barn? Yeah, in my shop. Yeah, on okay. my on my workbench. It Very happened. Cool. My, my notebook was open to a new page. And so where's I where's said, the windows at then? It, the, it the top faces there? west. It faces west. Off on the far right. Okay. So the light was just coming from the extreme right, and it was I think about five thirty in the evening, just as the sun was going down. So. Very cool. Yeah. If I could just say two quick things, because I think they're important. There, there's two aspects to this picture that really are that that every member of every camera club should should be aware of. Number one is the light. Okay. The light is so important. If you had terrible light, you wouldn't have taken this picture. No. The 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 other thing is seeing. You actually have to see to be a photographer. And that's, it's something that's hard to describe, but John saw this and he knew what he had. And, and that ability is, is not guaranteed to everybody with a camera, but be really open to looking at your world 
around you and little things. The other part is you focused on something very small here rather than something big. Uh, and that often works really, really well. I took probably about 20 shots, tried the angle a little differently and just picked this one. Yeah. So. Very cool. And you had fun too, didn't you? Yeah, I had a lot of fun in camera yeah. raw. I got rid of all of the stuff and extraneous stuff using the new masking features in camera raw. So. Congratulations, John. So Henry, uh, we have four images of yours. We'll put you on the spot. Oh, okay. <laughs> if you want to uh, describe these to us. Well, this is um, in a mall in Dublin. And uh, I was waiting for my wife, uh, who was not shopping. She was doing other things. Um, and I saw this, and I liked the design. But I was sure that 800,000 people had already taken the picture and almost didn't do it. Um, and I did more for hoots and giggles, and then I just played with it and post and had some fun with it and decided that I really liked it. So that's that's about it on that one. All right. Uh, hold on. Let's get to this one. Okay. Uh, this is uh, in the attic of our our former studio um, and gallery, and. I was just looking through because Lynn asked me for uh, some art shots, arch shots. And I thought this one was just fun. Uh, very difficult to, to light. Um, it's a single light coming in from, from the left. Um, the shadow in the background is a second exposure that you know, we just went through a whole series of uh, uh, you know, trying to cast shadows. No, and I knew that I would be adding them in. That, so this, obviously it's not an accident because it's a created image, but it was a thought out image beforehand. So I knew that the, the shadow was going to go back there. I knew where the shadow was going to go through and the shot had been thought through. Now, that didn't mean that it, it happened very quickly. It took a while to get what we wanted, um, but the model knew what we wanted. She was having fun, I was having fun, and uh, both of us really liked the shot. Very cool. And then we have this one. Um, this young lady, uh, at the time she was 15, um, time of the shot, and uh, she was, we could have left her in that cabinet and gone to lunch, and it's on a cold January day in an unheated barn. And she would have been sitting in that position when we came back. She was a marvelous, marvelous model. And one of the things that struck me was how beautiful she was and how innocent she was at the same time. So when I took this, the, the idea, um, uh, it, the shot is called Metamorphosis because I wanted to try to show her changing from uh, uh, a teenager into a young woman and do it in a way that, you know, was, was just reflected something nice about her. Um, so it, it shot with a large umbrella, um, slightly off to my left, not, not majorly off to my left because of reflections off of the glass. Uh, there's a speed light that's behind her and it was done as a multiple exposure to create the, uh, uh, the two images. Very cool. And then we have one last image. Okay, this one is, um, the, the little girl is actually looking through the plate glass window of the old Bethlehem Steel Executive Office Building. Uh, and it was a quick grab because she was so, so much fun in her dress. Um, but it was pretty, you know, it was a picture, yeah, it was, had very little merit on its own, but it became very useful. The, the building itself um, is uh, in Lehigh County, and it, it's just one of those old forge, I, I don't even know what it is anymore, I forgot. And then I started playing with it. Um, 
And I said, the building doesn't work by itself, which was one of the comments that I, I made tonight. Uh, the girl didn't work by herself. So what could I do that was different? And I started playing around and put the two of them together. The area uh, of the wall that looks like a witch or something, that's actually a flip. Um, because I didn't have enough, the, the picture was just too vertical. I needed more, I needed more width to it. I just didn't have it. So <clears throat> in post, I did an image flip, put the two of them together. And when I did, it created that ghost-like or whatever, witch-like um, image on the right-hand side that just added to this picture. That was, that was pure luck, um, but it worked. And in the back, I just went crazy and made fake light. So uh, that's the story with that. It took a fair amount to create. Um, it's uh, a picture that's done very well for me. I like it. Very cool. Very cool. All right, that concludes uh, our meeting. Henry, well, thank, is, it, it, thank it's you always... all very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Henry. It's always a pleasure to have you judge because we always learn so much. So, so much. Really appreciate all your, your uh, thoughtful comments and well, suggestions. I, I know that, you know, sometimes I, I fear that I, I, I'm harsh, uh, but it, it doesn't, this is a good opportunity for everybody to learn. Um, and not that, you know, this is the end all be all, it's an opinion that you can listen to or not. So I hope yeah. it was helpful. Very helpful. Great. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Lynn, you're unmuted. Matt, uh, Henry, thanks, I think, Matt. I think actually he left, though. <laughs> yeah, thank you.